So Sarah spent some time in Japan during the early 1970. That time when, that's the time that uh, I moved to, to this country. So we missed each other. <laughs> but uh, he was really um, uh, influenced by the Japanese uh, uh, garden in Kyoto, especially in, uh, especially in the one, one particular garden in Kyoto, which, uh, which I visited few, few, few months ago in, in Kyoto. So it's just a coincidence. But uh, the, so the, the design of the Japanese traditional garden naturally get involved with time concept and quite different from Western concept of gardening. So uh, I find some kind of a, a quality, like a time concept quality in the Sarah sculpture, especially in this Joe. Joe. So uh, I think it's echoing each other. Uh, to me, I, I, I never asked uh, Richard about it, but uh, you know, this is, I, I feel the same, same roots of kind of how to, to deal with concept of the time. In his sculpture, this is kind of continuous, uh, very mysterious, almost like a tra trap-like structure. So that's why I get really deeply in involved. Keep finding so many different compositions. Every step, in the, if I move like uh, one feet or two feet, then it's, I, I just have this totally different uh, composition. So I was amazed. I, I came up with uh, uh, almost like a 50 different shot from one sculpture. And then uh, every, every minute, the sun is moving. So the shadows, shadows keep moving, create a different composition. I applied to, uh, uh, to this uh, Joe series the same principle as if I were at the seashore and then watching the weather. And I, I kind of enjoyed it. it uh, fortunately, uh, I spent five days here, and um, most of the day is very nice day, clear, clear day, with some some crowd. So I decided to use the crowd as crowd formation as a part of the design. So you see some some rooms with crowd, and then even uh, uh, the crowd passage uh, re recorded. So that uh, in the downstairs room, you see uh, two identical composition with crowds slightly shifted. I need uh, maybe 30 seconds, you know, I use 8 by 10 camera with big holder, uh, which contains two sheets, front and back. So I have to, to place my holder and then shoot, and then put the, the sliding door closed and then take it out and flip it and put it back. This takes 30 seconds, less than one minute. So that's the time span Between showing, that. yeah. Also at the Ando's uh, uh, building in Naoshima, it's called, uh, in, in, uh, it's located in, uh, in uh, Inland Sea, Japan, the west side of Japan. And I intentionally uh, place my uh, seascape series outside uh, of the courtyard of Ando's building. And uh, it's, it's sealed by uh, plexiglass. It's waterproof. And uh, that was more than 10 years ago I, I hung with it. And since then, it's been exposed outside, especially in the morning under the direct sunlight. So if you touch it, it gets hot, it's heated. So this is the most severe condition for the photographs to be survived. So my intention was to, to let, let, let them fade, fade so that people can see how, how, how speedy that it's, the image can get disappeared. But uh, against my wish, the, the, the image remained very strong, almost no change after 10 years being ex exposed. And then, uh, instead, the, the plexiglass get slightly yellow, start, started to get yellowed. And then also the, uh, the eight ply map board uh, getting being yellowed, but they're not photographs. So I did a very well-made uh, archival process. Unfortunately, I shouldn't fix it very well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So uh, maybe next time I, I do a 19th century like uh, uh, least fixed images that may get faded. And I, I see uh, many uh, early photographs get faded, but that's the part of the beauty. I can feel that the presence of the, the, the passage of the time. Uh, and I think it's, it's nicely, nice trace of the time. I can feel it. That, that's my normal practice in mounting onto the, the Fulbright Museum board. And that I think uh, for the long run, in the mounting onto, directly onto the aluminum surface, then uh, I can always get, see through the aluminum, aluminum presence, aluminum presence, the surface transferred, the metal surface of the aluminum transferred through the, the surface of the photograph. So it's nice to have a cushioning material in between and then uh, I have to sand off the edge of the, the photographic uh, emulsion. And then let's create this very thin, uh, clean lines of white. That, that's, that's a nice way to end, end the image. So uh, I, I, I just simply liked it. Well, this is a time uh, photography as a time recording device. So. This is the, the, the best medium to, to record the past. And, and I, I've been collecting the, the fossils lately. <laughs> so I found it, I, I call it pre-photography time recording device. It it's functions as, as exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, 400 million years ago under the uh, sea, small creature, being pressed after the uh, underwater, uh, uh, well, maybe uh, eruption of some kind, and then being pressed. And once we found the stone and separated, one side is negative, one side, one side is positive. So photography is the, the medium to record the time for only 165 years. But now the presentation of the digital photography it's no longer recording a time. It can be manipulated any way that you want. So the credibility of the photography get lost now. So in our, in our uh, history, the photography from the first 165, 60 years, it's different now from, from now on the history of photography. I, I'm glad that I was living in the last decade of the real photography. <laughs> Sequence is very important. It has to be uh, like a, a kind of music oriented, you know, rhythmical quality is very important. So as you move one to the other, you always encounter something different, but uh, it's, it's, it's related to each other. It's naturally continue to the, the carriage painting. So that's very carefully designed in that way. You, I want to coexist peacefully with other, other art. And then uh, I consider that Ando's presence is very strong here. So you know, I, I don't want to fight. I want to coexist peacefully and nicely and naturally. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, uh, only one kind in a once in a lifetime in experience to, to have this subject matter as a sculpture uh, being placed next to, to my show. So, well, it just people come and get amazed how, how different uh, the photograph can be from the, the real, uh, real sculpture. So this is a kind of secret message for me that don't trust photography. <laughs> look at this, look at this in a sculpture and then it can be transferred the image wise to a two dimensional flat surface and and it's and then it's it's different uh, look at the Ellsworth case painting it's just it's so sensitive painting and it's unprotected so I have to be brave enough so that I decided to show it unframed unprotected and it is just by itself it doesn't look like a photography anymore. It's just a kind of solid material. You know, co competing with the, the solid metal, 
you know, this is, this is aluminum panel, but it's covered with this image. So it's, by itself, it has its sculpture, its own sculpture quality, and then slightly lift it off from the wall and gives a nice shadow. And so it's just a transformation of a different kind of uh, quality. Well, this main, main, main gallery has its strongest impact. So uh, you really carefully designed this space. And then there's two other galleries, one downstairs and one upstairs. So they are the one, one in the, uh, the, the space in the downstairs. I have <coughs> uh, some pieces with crowd formations and the passage of the crowd. So, uh, and so does the other small room. And the entrance that people get to see first images, so I carefully picked uh, the design. Uh, what, what to me, the, the vision through the camera is different from what you see through your eye. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I use not so many lenses for 8x10, mostly uh, slightly wide, wide angle lens. So I, I was always try, trying to tra train myself how it would be a, it looked uh, through the camera lens. So it's, it's, it's two-dimensional visions, and the human's always looking with two eyes, so it's three-dimensional visions that you, you keep creating in the brain. But uh, it's so much different once it's flattened to a two-dimension two uh, uh, through the three-dimensional visions. So uh, I always try to look how it would be look like through my camera. So this is a translation from my three-dimensional vision to two-dimensional visions. And uh, so, and then also black and white uh, value. You know, I, I'm, I can uh, switch, can't turn my switch on, and all of a sudden, the, all the vision get black and white so that I can see the body, well, this is probably 60% uh, shadow, and the highlight is, what, 30%. Uh, so I trained myself very, very well. And, uh, you know, zone system, as you know, and an ounce of Atom's technique of how to control the, the shadow, not losing the, the shadow detail, yet maintaining the highlight. Uh, so in my picture, you will see there's no dead black, nor uh, it's just 100% white. It's just continuous gray tones from the, the darkest spot to the brightest spot. So in a mixture of my composition through the, the character of the lens with controlling control technique at, applied to, to make a negative, not losing any uh, quality of the any uh, part of the shadow detail. But the photography, to me, it's, it's rather young medium uh, compared to the painting and sculpture. It's only about 165 or six years since its invention in the early 19th century. So uh, when I, when I ca first came to New York in 1974, um, I saw, uh, you know, the basic uh, uh, idea was, you know, I, I, want, I want to be an artist, but uh, in which medium? I, I have free to choose. And then I, I saw uh, uh, art scene that time, the, the Donald Judd and then Dan Flevin show, that uh, was fascinated me. So, and then also some conceptual uh, artists. And so, well, conceptualism and minimal art that's something uh, fascinated me. But uh, you know, what can I do? And if then I, I, I found out that I'm a well-trained photographer as well. So let's apply my photographic technique to, to, to be adapted to uh, uh, contemporary art scenes. And I thought I have an advantage because it's a medium-wise, it's so young, so it's not very, very well developed. The people get amazed since its invention that how how accurately that 
that the photography can record the reality. And then that's it. And so, well, well, I may try something new to use uh, the photography as a medium, uh, as a tool to represent my idea, uh, something to a contemporary art field. Because the painters, they, they've been doing, you know, constantly painting, and you know, just, it's dead end. That's why it it's came to this conceptual art and a minimalism, which means we, we are almost giving up. <clears throat> we don't know what to do from now on. <laughs> Actually, after, after 1980s, and, uh, 1980s, 1990s, it went back to the original, you know, uh, expressionism type painting, which is uh, kind of uh, going backwards. It's kind of a sad movement end up with nothing to do, let's go back to the original traditions. So uh, in my case, I, I wanted to, to, to investigate the new way of use photography as an expression of human emotion and idea. Quality is very important. Uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, artistic quality, uh, I believe it's only the remained after the finest quality of the product. Uh, so, uh, you know, th there's many uh, different type of photographer. Uh, for instance, Araki is very different, or Moriyama, they're all Japanese photographer, but uh, it's a very grainy, uh, less conscious about the quality. But uh, in my case, I still think that uh, the 19th century quality of the, the photography still create the best quality picture. You know, using a large format camera, and then that, uh, which means that the negative itself is so big, so that uh, you can get the the, the, the information, amount of the information stored in the negative is so so huge. In a 35 millimeter, uh, it's so easy to handle, and then uh, well, digital photography is out of question now. But uh, <laughs> Well, they, they may have uh, quite a big amount of information, but uh, still the 19th century photography create the best quality for me. So I'm a kind of endangered species. No, it's so difficult and hard to control this 19th century technique. So uh, uh, I'd rather stay in this uh, status to, to keep this traditional method, you know, F64 grab, and, uh, well, I'm technically, I'm very much influ influenced by uh, Ansel Adams' book, you know, so uh, uh, aesthetically, I'm quite different, but uh, to create this 100% control of the shadow detail, I, I stole so many uh, formula, chemical formulas from, from his, uh, his uh, book, so why not? Uh, why not? It still makes the best quality picture. Why I have to shift to a digital camera and then, then print the less interesting. The digital control, I cannot control this, uh, the shadow detail. Mm -hmm. mm. Usually do one or two mm -hmm. shots, so I, I, I easily uh, uh, get the one, one beautiful shot from outside. Mm -hmm. And then I knew that uh, uh, this museum has this uh, Richard Serra's uh, Joe mm -hmm. outside, so I just uh, I just saw it, and then I found it's from from architectural point of view, I can I can take this you know consider this uh, this uh, uh, sculpture as an architecture, so I just brought my architectural equipment to shoot architectural photography. Uh, why, why not apply the same principle to this uh, sculpture as a as a, as an architectural uh, structure? Uh, architecture is something for the functional purpose, and a sculpture non-functional. Uh -huh. But to me, this uh, this so-called sculpture is functional for my photo series. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the architect is trying to compete with the quality of the space, outside, inside, and then in that context, you know, this is the same, it's the same things to me. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, I, I, I 
used to be called as photographer, but uh, I spent so much time uh, de dealing with the space, uh, especially when I hung my show, you know, the museum space, I create uh, my space as a kind of three-dimensional sculptural space. So in that sense, you know, I'm working like an uh, architect mentality or scu sculptor's mentality. I create two-dimensional space from three-dimensional space. So uh, Richard says, uh, Joe, a uh, photograph's case. Uh, this is very nice sample. Uh, people come here and see, see the, the photographs of Richard Serra. At the same time, the people can see the three-dimensional uh, sculpture by itself. So it, it's, it's so easy to compare. And I was amazed, came here yesterday and see my work with Richard Serra's piece. And it's so different, yes. By itself, it has its sculpture, its own sculpture quality. And it's slightly lifted off from the wall and gives a nice shadow. And so it's just a transformation of a different kind of uh, quality through this three-dimensional three uh, heavy iron sculpture to uh, thin layers of uh, silver sculpture. I would say. <laughs> Photography is silver and then fiber based you know, traditional uh, black and white prints contains the silver in itself. So I, I always see, feel the presence of the silver which is the colors of the, the precious metal which I don't feel it and see it in the, in the Type-C prints or digital print, digitally printed images. That's, that's chemical color. This is the colors of uh, silver. The, the core vision must be remained in, in the building. So that, that's my thinking and my idea how to approach the original visions of the architect. That's why I'm keeping you out of focus. I always deal with the space, especially the under, underground space. This is almost feel like uh, you are in the bottom of the well or something. It's a very sh small opening of the sky and the light keep coming in from the street of the sky and then giving some interesting sh shadow uh, formation. So uh, this is very good experience for me to, mm -hmm. to deal with my future project mm -hmm. of this underground dark chamber-like space. Mm -hmm. This photographic uh, uh, images look huge because I'm applying the same technique to, to be given to the architecture series. Mm -hmm. I consider this sculpture as a, as a, as a building. So, you know, this can be a uh, you know, hundred, hundred meter high, two hundred meter high. So the people lose the sense of the scale. That's that's the kind of interesting aspect of my photography. And then even though I'm placing the very low position and looking up, so it gives the the feeling that people is looking up the high high rise building. I never think of this. Uh, uh, the kind of memorial side of the court, like a, you know, it's almost like a cemetery or mm -hmm. tomb. It can be, this is named after the late husband of Emery Pulitzer, Joe. So uh, this can be a, 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 a stone, a tomb, or a memorial uh, tower of, of her late husband. So where well, I don't personally associate it with uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pulitzer. But the core vision must be remained in, in the building. So that, that's my thinking and my idea how to approach the original visions of the architect. That's why I'm keeping you out of focus. I was at the opening of uh, uh, Gagojian Gallery in New York. This was the opening of Richard's uh, newly made sculpture. And then at the same time, I'm having, I'm showing my pieces on the second floor of the gallery. So he, Richard came to see my, my pieces. And I wasn't there, but he said, well, he was kind of shocked. And he started saying, well, this is not about me. This is not about me. 
which is a very good sign for me. <laughs> so I do want to show my own uh, identity and concept. So he, he is just a source in my case. <laughs> this is particularly interesting piece is this, uh, the shadow is here and this is, I am almost approaching to the center part of the sculpture and then this is the edge of the last uh, inner core. Uh, the shadow is falling on uh, onto the outer core's shadow. So, you know, I'm creating a kind of a, a Richard Serra sculpture-like uh, uh, shadow here. So it's just uh, uh, kind of double interest. Well, I've seen uh, the jo uh, uh, Joe's, uh, Joe Reich in the spiral uh, Koiri uh, pieces at the Gagojin show quite some years ago, and then also Dia Foundation they have it, but I never seen it outside. So uh, well, this is I just uh, revalued his his uh, quality of the the space, and so I, I simply liked it. Not, not only for the Joe series, but the, the, I consider this uh, Joe series as part of my architecture series. So I apply the same principle to all, all the architecture series photographs. And I, I, uh, I call my technique twice as infinity technique. So uh, which means uh, I set my focal point onto the twice as infinity spot, which doesn't exist in this world. And if you're using the small camera, uh, you, you, you're trying to focus. Now, most of the camera is auto focus, but it used to be you have to focus by your hand. And clearly it says infinity spot. And then you just set the, set the infinity spot, and then you get the focus on the infinity, the far, vista, mountain, the seascapes. But uh, the old traditional view camera, there's no marks of infinity. You just focus, and then that's what you get focused, which means I can easily pass beyond the, the infinity uh, point. Uh, if I'm using a 300 millimeter lens, which means I have this lens here and a film here, and between the distance between lens and film, if it's set it to uh, 300 millimeter, that's the, the focal point of the infinity. But if I can, uh, you know, uh, shortened it to 150 millimeter, which means ideally it, this should be a twice as infinity. So that's so I set it into this half the way through the the, the focal point, the, the lens capacity. That's technically supposed to be a twice as infinity spot. I'm at the age of 58 now, so. Doing something, same things for 10 years, and I usually get get bored. <laughs> and then, you know, I get uh, attention as a photographer, then I get too busy, and then I, you know, th then I have to change to my kind of commercial mode, which I don't want to. Well, the Jonathan Safran IV is a contributor for the text, and, uh, well, I've known him for long time so but we decided to do something together first and then uh, this Joe project came in so I asked him whether he's willing to contribute and he, he agreed and so he, he wrote a beautiful short story uh, titled Joe it's nothing to do with sculpture it's nothing to do with uh, actual uh, Joe Pulitzer but uh, this is a new, new uh, challenge, a new, new uh, form of uh, making a book. You know, he, he creates something, nice short story, a company to, to this uh, uh, photographs of Sculpture Joe. And then so the, uh, uh, Richard Serra, myself, and <laughs> Jonathan, the three artists, working on the, the same theme of Joe, but the three of us is totally doing different things and then just bring it together as a one book.
I did my own uh, sequencing, and then uh, um, Jonathan wrote uh, the basic uh, story. And then after, uh, well, as the book being edited and designed by uh, Takaki Matsumoto, my friend, and who designed most of my catalog, <coughs> and uh, at, at the end, uh, we had uh, like a, like a five, six blank page at the end. So Jonathan saw it, and he expanded his story <laughs> to be fitted to, to this uh, uh, size of the book. So that's, that's how it's <laughs> ended.